Well, there are hundreds of types of business jargon, and uh, I've been collecting them for years and years and years, in fact, about 30 years. So I've got three or 4,000 of these now. I think a lot of people have heard these, and they might be totally bewildered by them. But it's fun, I think, to dissect some of the phrases just to see what they might possibly mean. So let's take an example. Um, trying to stab a seal with a banana. Uh, this is one of my particular favourites. Again, I like to deconstruct what that means. So I'm picturing a seal, probably, on a table. Uh, I guess they're pretty blubbery and slippery. Um, and the client or person who's trying to uh, stab the seal has chosen a banana. And the banana clearly is not a weapon of choice. Uh, it's not as effective as a dagger or anything like that. So the banana is just sliding off the seal. So why would someone say, this is like trying to stab a seal with a banana? Well, I think what they're trying to say is, this is quite a tricky job. Uh, but what they don't seem to realise is that the analogy also reveals that they're too daft to choose the correct method for solving the problem. So now I want to park it, ring fence it and take it offline. This is something that a client actually said to me last year. So let's try and work out what on earth they're talking about. When they say park it, I think what they mean is not drive a car into a certain slot in an executive car park, but to put it somewhere. Of course at this stage we haven't specified what it is. They then apparently want to ring fence it, and this is a word that's been used a lot. It's been nicked effectively from the world of cowboys or livestock. There's a ring fencing livestock in an area, and now people use it to describe budgets, figures and themes in projects. And finally, to take it offline. Well, the interesting thing is that before online was invented, everything in the world was offline, but was never described as offline. But now what people do is they feel it's essential to contrast the fact that this thing isn't, quote, online, uh, by necessarily saying that it's offline when we knew that anyway. So I'm going to park it, ring fence it, and take it offline. Absolute nonsense. Now, I've always liked grasping at fog. Uh, most people know that fog cannot be grasped, uh, but nevertheless, people say that they are grasping at fog. So what are they trying to say? I think what they're trying to say is that the fog is a metaphor for something that's quite difficult to grasp. So then really what we want to know is, if it's that difficult, why are you grasping at it? And if you're grasping but not succeeding, are you intelligent enough to handle the problem? So what the people who say they're grasping at fog tend to reveal about themselves is that they're just quite dim. So one of my personal favourites is trying to nail a jelly to the wall. And I heard this about 20 years ago, I've heard it many times since, and it always gives me a chuckle. So in my mind, I've got a picture of some very earnest businessman in a suit, probably standing on a chair uh, with a hammer in one hand and some nails between his teeth, and he's trying to hammer this jelly to the wall. It's probably a bright, luminous colour, uh, probably quite large. Quite why he's trying to do this, we don't really know, but it's amusing. So once again, the analogy reveals that the jelly is a very complicated and diffuse thing and in effect he cannot nail it to the wall. Uh, now what this means of course is that whoever uses this phrase either A should not be attacking this problem because it is a jelly and it's too difficult and it will never be nailed to the wall or B they're using the wrong tools or they're too stupid to solve the jelly problem so they really shouldn't be doing it.